Maxwell Chikambutso has never been afraid to push boundaries. His self-powered aircraft is a testament to that unshakable ambition. I had heard stories of the aircraft's capabilities, but seeing it in person was another experience entirely. The moment I walked up to it, I was struck by its quiet presence. No roaring engine, no smell of jet fuel, just an elegant, aerodynamic structure pulsing with potential. It looked like it had been designed by the future and sent back in time. As a pilot with over 20 years in the air, I thought I'd seen it all. But this machine felt different. It wasn't just built to fly. It was built to rewrite what flight means. My name is David Moyo, and I've flown everything from biplanes to commercial jets. But nothing prepared me for what I was about to experience. Maxwell's team gave me the full pre-flight briefing. It wasn't your usual checklist. Instead of fuel calculations, we were looking at electromagnetic field levels. Instead of checking for oil leaks, we were confirming the charge levels of self-replenishing power systems. Even my co-pilot was replaced by an AI-driven stability assistant built directly into the craft's operating system. I stepped into the cockpit and felt the control surfaces respond like they were alive. The seat was molded perfectly, almost anticipating my every shift. The dashboard lit up with dynamic indicators I'd never seen before. Everything about the aircraft screamed innovation. I took a deep breath and looked at the takeoff strip. We were about to conduct a speed challenge that could change aviation forever. The goal was to break through current electric-powered aircraft speed limits. But more than that, it was to demonstrate that self-powered technology could outperform expectations. We taxied to the runway, completely silent. Onlookers couldn't believe a plane could move with no engine noise. I gave the signal and the ground crew cleared us. I engaged the primary power system. A soft hum resonated through the frame. It wasn't vibration. It was harmony. We accelerated down the strip with shocking torque. It didn't feel like acceleration. It felt like being pulled by a force beyond gravity. By the time the wheels left the ground, we were already ahead of schedule. Climb rate exceeded anything I had experienced in electric flight. But the true test was ahead. Could we hit and sustain record speeds without compromising stability or safety? I guided the aircraft toward the high-speed corridor. Wind conditions were mild, ideal for the test. But nothing about this flight was going to be ordinary. At 10,000 feet, I leveled the craft and initiated the speed calibration sequence. Maxwell's system responded instantly. The aircraft surged forward with breathtaking smoothness. It wasn't brute force, it was refined acceleration. Each knot gained felt like a whisper rather than a shove. My hands danced over the controls, but the aircraft needed very little correction. At 240 knots, I expected resistance. Instead, the aircraft sliced through the air like silk. There was a moment when everything became still. No drag. No turbulence. Just an unshakable glide. I glanced at the instrument panel. 284 knots. And rising, I pushed the control column gently. The response was immediate and fluid. Maxwell's engineering had eliminated latency in feedback. Every action was mirrored instantly. I could feel my adrenaline surge, not from fear, but from awe. We had reached 310 knots. I never thought a self-powered aircraft could feel so agile at that speed. Then came the challenge. Unexpected crosswinds picked up from the east. It was the kind of test no simulator could fully prepare you for. But the aircraft held steady. The AI-assisted system adjusted vectoring on the fly. I monitored the control surfaces shifting in real time. The aircraft danced through the wind like it had choreographed the turbulence. We maintained speed, 312 knots and holding. I was stunned. Back in the hangar, we had only hoped to hit 290. Now we were well into uncharted territory. The flight engineer's voice came through the headset. David, how does it feel? I laughed. It feels like the sky just gave us permission. The entire cabin glowed with a faint blue aura, ionized air reacting to the aircraft's energy system. We were flying inside a bubble of our own propulsion. At 328 knots, I knew we were making history. I reduced throttle slightly to stabilize readings. The aircraft responded like a fine-tuned instrument. No dips. No shatters. 
just effortless cruising at high speed. As I prepared for a return loop, I glanced at the onboard diagnostics. Power levels were holding steady. No sign of drain. The energy recovery system was doing its job perfectly. Even after 15 minutes at max speed, we were not losing efficiency. I began the return arc banking gently. The horizon tilted with grace. No g-forces, just controlled precision. I realized I wasn't flying the aircraft. I was collaborating with. It anticipated my moves. It understood my inputs. Maxwell's creation wasn't just smart. It was sentient in its own mechanical way. As we descended, the ground came back into focus. The runway stretched ahead like a silver thread. Landing was smooth, almost too smooth. The aircraft seemed reluctant to stop flying. When we touched down, the silence was electric. Then came the cheers. The crew erupted in applause as the craft taxied to a halt. We had done it. We had pushed the boundaries and returned safely. Engineers rushed forward, pulling data from every onboard sensor. I stepped out, feeling 10 years younger. Reporters were already calling it the birth of a new aviation age. Maxwell stood at the edge of the strip, grinning. He knew this was just the beginning. I shook his hand. Congratulations, I said. He replied, No, congratulations to you. You just piloted the future. And he wasn't wrong. That night, I couldn't sleep. The flight kept replaying in my mind. Not just the speed, but the serenity. The unity between machine and human. I've flown many aircraft, but none made me feel like I was part of the sky. This one did. Because it didn't fight gravity. It worked with it. Maxwell's vision had turned physics into poetry. And I was lucky enough to write the first stanza. I reviewed the data again. We had sustained over 320 knots for 23 minutes. Unheard of for self-powered tech. Power system integrity remained above 97%. No mechanical anomalies. No software faults. Just flawless flight. The control algorithms were brilliant. They compensated for every condition change. They even preempted environmental variables. This wasn't just a speed test. It was a demonstration of intelligence. The aircraft learned. It adjusted in real time. And it did so silently. The lack of noise became the loudest statement. Clean flight is possible. Fast flight is possible. Sustainable speed is not a contradiction. Maxwell's team released early footage to the press. The internet exploded. Pilots, engineers, and enthusiasts couldn't believe what they were seeing. Many called it a hoax, but the flight logs were verified by third-party observers. The telemetry was rock solid. There were no tricks, just technology. The following morning, I was invited for a debrief. I gave my full assessment, strengths, areas for refinement. But honestly, there wasn't much to criticize. This aircraft was ahead of its time, perhaps even ahead of us. Maxwell asked one question. What would you do next? I thought for a moment. Push it farther. He smiled. Then let's set the next goal. And just like that, a new chapter began. The days following the speed challenge were filled with debriefings, data analysis, and endless interviews. Everyone wanted to know how it felt to fly a machine that redefined the rules of aviation. I kept repeating the same phrase, it felt like the aircraft was alive, because in many ways it was. Maxwell and his engineers were already studying the flight data for optimization opportunities. But to most of us, the performance was already near perfection. Still, Maxwell wasn't satisfied with just breaking records. He wanted to smash them. He proposed a new objective, extended duration at high speed under unpredictable environmental conditions. It was the next evolution of the speed challenge. I volunteered immediately. I needed to fly it again, not out of duty, out of obsession. The aircraft had changed something inside me. It was like discovering a new sense I didn't know I had. Maxwell's team spent days recalibrating the AI flight assistant. They fed it additional flight data from both our run and previous test scenarios. This new update would allow the AI to adapt even faster to conditions like crosswinds, downdrafts, and pressure shifts. On test day, I arrived before dawn. The aircraft sat on the tarmac, glistening in the amber morning light. 
I approached it like one greets an old friend. There was a familiarity now, a mutual respect. The engineers completed final checks. I reviewed the flight plan. This time, we'd test high-speed maneuverability, not just sustained velocity. The path would take us over uneven terrain, shifting atmospheric layers, and rapidly fluctuating pressure zones. As I climbed into the cockpit, I noticed something different. The AI had a name now, ARA, Aero Reactive Assistant. Maxwell believed naming it created a stronger connection between human and machine. I didn't disagree. ARA greeted me through the cockpit interface with a calm, synthesized voice. Welcome back, Captain Moyo. Systems nominal. I smiled. The sense of presence was unmistakable. We initiated takeoff protocols. Again, no roar. No smoke. Just motion. Acceleration was smoother this time. Like the aircraft had taken a deep breath and exhaled into motion. Takeoff was effortless. We climbed to 12,000 feet with consistent thrust. I pushed into the first maneuver checkpoint. A sharp bank to the left. Ara ajusta stabilizers. Before I even touched the controls, the aircraft moved with surgical precision. We entered the pressure shift corridor, known for causing turbulence even in commercial flights. But Maxwell's aircraft absorbed the chaos. ARA's predictive algorithms kept us stable. Sensors mapped the environment in real time, feeding corrections to the flight system. I watched as wings flexed gently against the airflow, adjusting shape mid-flight. It was like flying a living organism, not mechanical, biological in rhythm. We crossed 300 knots again. No resistance, only freedom. ARA alerted me to an upcoming thermal pocket. We prepared to dive into it head-on. I braced for impact. There was none. The aircraft adjusted vector angles milliseconds before contact. It sliced through the heat bubble like a blade. I was speechless. We weren't reacting anymore. We were anticipating. Flying had become proactive. We climbed higher, 16,000 feet. Visibility was flawless. I saw the Earth curve beneath us. The aircraft felt untethered from gravity. We initiated spiral maneuver testing. Each rotation remained centered, balanced by micro-adjustments from ARA. I released the stick for a moment. The aircraft held its line. Perfectly. RA spoke again. All systems stable. Ready for hyperloop simulation. Hyperloop simulation was Maxwell's term for simulating speeds nearing supersonic levels, though not breaching sound barriers. I confirmed. Engage. The acceleration that followed felt like transcendence. The world blurred outside. Clouds streaked past in elongated trails. We hit 345 knots. The frame remained unshaken. I kept expecting some sign of strain, but there was none. We were pushing into realms no electric aircraft had touched before. ARA kept feeding metrics, engine temperature, wing stress, airflow density. All green. We looped back toward the base. Not because we had to, but because there was no higher target left for today. I initiated descent. ARA monitored ground winds and adjusted flaps accordingly. The approach was smoother than my own hand could deliver. We touched down like a whisper. Maxwell was waiting with folded arms and a knowing grin. How far did she go? I looked at him and answered, farther than any map can measure. Engineers ran up, capturing fresh data. ARA uploaded diagnostics to the central server automatically. No overheating, no energy degradation, no anomalies. Again, the team celebrated, but quietly, because we all knew something bigger was coming. A third test was proposed. Not just a speed challenge, a speed race, against one of the fastest combustion aircraft in its class. Maxwell's aim was bold. Prove that sustainability could outperform traditional fuel-based aviation in speed and control. The challenge was accepted. The event was scheduled for three weeks later. The opponent was a high-performance, gas-powered sport aircraft piloted by a former military ace. The buzz online was deafening. Pundits said it was impossible, that no electric or self-powered aircraft could keep up with high-octane combustion at full thrust. But they didn't understand Maxwell's technology. They hadn't felt what I had felt in that cockpit. Maxwell added a few final upgrades, 
ARA was now capable of short-term AI autonomy, meaning in the event of emergency or blackout, it could complete the flight solo. Flight day arrived. Crowds gathered. Media vans lined the perimeter. Two aircraft sat on opposing runways. Mine Maxwell's silent machine. His the roaring beast of fuel and fire. We prepared for takeoff. Engines roared on the other side. Ours hummed. The contrast was poetic. The countdown began. Launch. We surged forward. Their aircraft screamed with acceleration. Ours glided, but with equal force. Side by side, we climbed into the sky. Speed climbed rapidly. I hit 290 knots within seconds. So did he. But at 310, he began experiencing drag. I did not. My aircraft cut through the air with energy-efficient precision. ARA adjusted pitch and yaw with finesse. We reached checkpoint one simultaneously. The crowd below gasped. Maxwell's aircraft was matching a fuel-powered jet. Checkpoint two came faster. I edged ahead. Barely. But ahead. Checkpoint three, we entered a spiral descent test. I descended tighter and more controlled. My opponent flared slightly too early. Checkpoint four was a straight sprint. We both hit 340 knots. But his fuel burn spiked. My energy output stayed flat. Final checkpoint was a sharp U-turn under high G-force. ARA managed wing redistribution in real time. I made the turn without strain. He did too but lost airspeed in recovery. I crossed the final marker first. By just under two seconds. Silence. Then roars. Cheers erupted across the field. History had been rewritten. A self-powered aircraft had just beaten combustion in a speed race. And not by brute force. By brilliance. Maxwell walked over and hugged me. You proved it could be done. I shook my head. No, you did. That evening, international aviation forums. Lit up. The FAA began inquiries into certification pathways for Maxwell's aircraft. Private investors flooded in. Orders were requested from multiple countries. But Maxwell wasn't rushing. He said, This isn't about sales. It's about setting a new standard. He meant it. ARA underwent another round of improvements. Maxwell began discussing vertical takeoff and landing variants. He envisioned short-range city-to-city models. He envisioned high-altitude stratospheric crafts. He wasn't building aircraft. He was building a movement. Every part of this journey changed my understanding of flight. We weren't defying gravity. We were partnering with it. I'd flown at insane speeds before, but I had never flown with purpose like this. I had never flown in complete silence at 340 knots. I had never flown with an AI co-pilot who understood me without words. Maxwell didn't just engineer a vehicle. He engineered a new relationship between human and machine. The future is no longer far away. It's in our skies right now. And I was honored to be the first to chase it. And now to live it.